You're listening to The Mary Jones Show on the Talk of Connecticut. tell you it is a good day when you have a good friend with expertise in a certain area and you call her up and you say hey can you come in and talk about this and she says yes and she's here right now PR guru and good friend Ann Baldwin. Hello, Ann. Hi, Mary. How are you? <laughs> I am doing great. Good. No, it was great to hear well, from you this morning. And, and you know, it was, it was interesting because you, I think you sent me an email right before I watched Paula Dean on the Today Show. So the timing was perfect because I just can't get enough of that oh, stuff. I you know, know, that's it. what I do. So and it was I interesting. Was, I was getting ready to watch the interview. And I was, so I was thinking about that. And I said to myself, you know, I'm just curious. Let me get in touch with Ann and see if she might be able to stop by. So thank you so much for doing that. However, before we get to Paula, Paula Dean controversy, a newly engaged woman. That's what you are, Ian Baldwin. <laughs> but that's not a controversy, is it? <laughs> no, that's no, not. I said before we get to that, that's not okay, controversial good. Let's start with the good all. news, right? right? Right, but it's so exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm your ring. Isn't it gorgeous? It is it's stunning. So I know. Look at that, Tony. Now, is it is it a family heirloom? Because no, it looks vintage. No, it, it, it does look vintage. Yes. And uh, But no, he got it at Seelig in Windsor, and it's just absolutely bill, I should say. Uh, what? Style. It's the it's latest the, style, Tony? Tony knows. Why, you really? got one? You got somebody on standby, Tony? You Do you? <laughs> No, wow, you better, I hope you're saving up, because I think this was pretty expensive. That'll be but one lucky woman who yeah. gets Tony. No, so it's absolutely you. gorgeous, and oh, Bill's is. a great guy, and I've uh, known him forever. So, you know, it's just, um, it's it was time. So it's going to be nice to have a man around the house again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, they do, they yeah. do serve a purpose every they now and again. They certainly There's do. that they can do. Most of yes. the time. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Mary. So I appreciate exciting. that. Thank so you. So darn exciting. Well, when you think about public relations, when you think about professionals, hopefully Ann Baldwin comes to mind, and specifically, Ann, crisis management. Mm -hmm. The reason I thought of you, I was thinking again about the Paula Deen controversy, and some people are saying that her empire is crumbling, and we know that the Food Network has fired her. We know that um, Smithfield Ham has fired her, yep. and I heard this morning Walmart also. Right. QVC, the last time I They're checked, still is still thinking on the about fence. It, right. They're still thinking mm -hmm. about it. But she's lost a good a good share of, of her business, certainly. And from a PR perspective, man, you find yourself in the hot seat. You have to say things correctly. You have to know what to do, how to do it. And that's where someone like you comes in. And when to do it. And, and, and that's when where, Yeah, it. and this has been very interesting because professionally I've been dealing with this now for about 20 years, you know, as a former media person, I look at how people respond, when they respond, and what it is that they say. You know, and sometimes people say, oh, well, you you know, you must have a PR person. You try to spin that. You know, in a situation like Paula Deen's, I look at it from this point. First of all, she said to Matt Lauer on the Today Show, I will be there, and then she blew him off. Her people blew him off. Right, because said she was too, tired, exhausted, distraught. and yeah. distraught. Okay, so then... Understandably. Of course. So then she doesn't show up. So Matt's not exactly thrilled with that. You don't just blow off, as you know, with a live show. You, you've made a commitment. You keep that commitment. Right. That's your responsibility. She didn't do that. So when she went on this morning, um, he already was, a, you know, had his back up a bit, as he should. And I think that that came across in the interview. Um, the other thing that I noticed when I watched her video apology is it just didn't feel right to no. me. And then they, she got criticized because it was too long, and then she was criticized because it was edited but you know what i have to say professionally who out there and i would bet that there are more people out there that have made a racial slur that haven't whether it was 20 years ago 30 years ago or yesterday all people of all races i believe the majority of which have made racial slurs i'm not defending what paula dean th did 30 years ago but also keep in mind this was under a, during a deposition, this is with her hand in the air, swearing that and this guy, she said, had a gun to her head during a bank robbery. You know what? I'm not so sure that a lot of us might not have done the same thing. So is her empire crumbling? Yes. And you know why I think it's crumbling is because of, A, the way her people have advised her to handle this, how she has handled this, and then the sound bites and the quotes that are pulled from a larger conversation. Um, you know, you can't, it's hard to defend that because we don't get to hear an extended conversation, although we did this morning. She was kind of all over the place. I thought she was all over the place initially, initially in the first maybe minute and a half mm -hmm. or so. I said to myself, I think she's on drugs. Yeah, she, she did. Seemed, she yeah. seemed kind of out she of did. it. She did. She seemed kind of loopy. 
And then that went away a bit. That seemed to dissipate. And, and it was interesting to watch because she had her agenda. She wanted to get some things across, yes. you could see. And mm-hmm. Matt wanted her to answer his questions understandably right but that's what i recommend to people though the media has its agenda and if you think that it doesn't you are mistaken so i advise people when you're going into an interview situation regardless of what the reporter asks you you start with what you need to say because think about it you don't know how long an an opportunity a media interview is going to be and people are, again, are going to pick somebody. Before you know it, and you're going to kick yourself for not having right. gotten that You lose across. the opportunity. So yeah. she did that. Matt asked her question. She said, first, Matt, what I want to tell you is this. And she did do that. But then she went off on all these tangents. I know. I know. <laughs> if you, if she was your client, and again, you don't know, speaking with Ann Baldwin, you don't know the backstory other than just what we're all reading about in the, in the newspapers and online and so on. But if she was your client... How would you be feeling about her performance, if I can call it that, on the Today Show? Uh, It was too long. I believe that she sat there uh, too long. What I would say... But she she didn't have control over that. Sure you do. You say, yes, Matt Lauer, I would love to go on the Today Show, um, but I'd like to keep it to a three-minute interview. It can't be open-ended. Because the longer it was you, a long it was too long. It was painful in the end. The longer you sit it's there, the crying. Yes, I'm not laughing at that, but it just it seemed but to was like she fall really apart. crying? I don't know. I didn't see a whole lot of tears coming down, but she just had that crying, you know, just talk, that emotion in her voice, but it wasn't coming across in her face. That might have worked on radio, but not so sure that it worked on television. So the longer you sit there in a in a no win situation, really. Uh, the the bigger the hole you that you dig, and you can know, you can bet that the entertainment tonight's, you know, the extras they're going to pick those sound bites, the one the ones that that they can um, talk about and mm-hmm. really make it more controversial. Exactly. Yeah. Now I thought that Matt Lauer did a good job. <laughs> I thought I thought he did a good job. He did a good job, but he just had that, like... And I'm not a huge fan of his. I'm not saying it for that reason, Mm -hmm. but I thought he did a good job. Well, he didn't have a lot of compassion. Like I said, I think he went into this interview with a chip on his shoulder and, you know, had some questions. You know, um, when she went off on these tangents, like telling the story about letting her her grandson stay up late, and then the grandson says, you know, I can't tell a lie, and she talks about that, and she says, you know, if you've never done anything bad, and then, you know, throw a rock at me, throw a rock at my head so hard that I die. I mean, just like you said, it's what the heck happened? Where was this coming from? I'm not sure. (laughs) But I think a lot of people that I've talked to today have said the same thing. It was almost as if she was, like, overly medicated or something. She wasn't clear and concise. Um, But again, I'm going to defend her to say, and you asked me initially, and maybe you want to get to this a little bit later on, but will her empire survive or will it continue to crumble? Uh, I believe that she will survive. Look at Martha Stewart. Her same thing kind of happened to her, tax evasion. She did jail time, and her empire has survived and, more importantly, thrived. But it's interesting, isn't it, if we look at the two offenses, if I can call it that, Mm -hmm. tax evasion versus saying the absolute worst thing about a group of people. Right. The absolute worst thing is mm-hmm. that N-word. Of course. That's what she did. Yes. It's a whole lot more emotional. It's a whole lot more personal than tax evasion, I think. Uh, it's it's very offensive. Again, put it in, a, in perspective, however, that, um, you know, what I want to say is that it was a long time ago, and I believe that the reference to when she used it, you know, was in a situation that was that was pretty bad. I mean, it was a bad situation. When you've got a gun pointed to your head, you know, what are we capable of? What would I say? What would you say? What would somebody of no another gun. color say to somebody of another color? I mean, yeah, there who was knows? There no gun pointing to her head, however, when she made the other comment, and I don't know what the time frame is mm-hmm. in terms of planning that wedding, the wedding yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and the, that ridiculous mm-hmm. comment. I don't know if that was more recent, longer ago, and it seemed to me that she contradicted herself 
in the interview, there was some. Yeah, there were some contradictions where she said she had said it again, right, and, and, and then Matt then, kind of pressed her on that, and then she went back to one of those bizarre stories. Exactly. But you know what? Nobody's perfect, and I and I and, and the thing is that you know even you you mentioned at the top of the show and congratulated me on my recent engagement. That was put into the Hartford Current, and then you know how people can leave comments afterwards after yes. the article. The first comment was somebody who said something very negative about me and about one of my other colleagues, someone who you know very well. And I'm not going to give this person the the you know satisfaction of even repeating the comment. But you know it really bothered me, and it was almost like this this whoever this was was trying to bring me down. And people said, you know what? That's okay because you're successful. So is this other individual. Let it go. Some people have nothing better to do. Some people don't want to see people succeed. Now, should she have done this? Absolutely not. Did she do it a long time ago? Absolutely. So hopefully, you know, but the, the other thing is in crisis communication, you need to take the hit. You need to admit that what you did was wrong, that you made a mistake and move on. And so will, guess what? Most of the people and the news media. You know what the best thing that happened to Paula Dean was today? Hernandez yeah, got arrested. Oh, that's right, because that's what for people murder. are talking about For now. murder. So yeah. in a crisis situation, you only hope that something worse than what you're accused of doing happens to take you off of the front page. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so timing true. is perfect for her for that. But she's still, because of the Matt Lauer interview, she's going to be at the top of the, at least the, you know, the news cycle tonight. Well, it's going to be very interesting, and we have some open phones. If you have any comments on the Paula Dean situation, feel free to give us a call, one eight 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 five seven four two seven two three. It's going to be interesting in terms of of whether an awful lot of people feel that their minds were changed after this interview, more positively or more negatively, depending and what ultimately happens with the other contracts, the QVC and the other things she has going on. Well, I think one of the things that she's got going for her is that she is very approachable. When you see her on TV, when you see her in her element, you feel like you kind of know her. And I think a lot of people do know her, and they have come to her defense. So can that character, you know, again, get th over this hump and move on? And, and like she said in the Matt Lauer interview, she's done a lot of great things for minorities, too. She didn't want to get into that list, and I'm sure she has. I don't think she's a bad person. No. I don't think that she is... Um, you know, vindictive. I don't think that, she, you know, I think she really is a good person. And my hope is that, you know, like the QVCs, take the time to really let this kind of fall out, see where it falls, and then make a decision as to jumping on the bandwagon of everybody else and saying, see you later, kick, kick her to the curb. Let's check in with our traffic reporter, Nicole Davis. How are you doing? Well, you know, Mary, we're doing okay over here. We have a couple of minor slowdowns, but really not much happening in the way of crashes, which we certainly enjoy. We'll start right now on the 91 northbound ride. It's going to hold up from the airport road to the Charter Oak Bridge. Also expect to see a little bit of a slowdown right by 84. Southbound side's going to be a little bit slow by 291. And then again, from the 84 interchange, you're going to find a bit of a minor slowdown out there toward the Conlin and the airport road. 291 eastbound now seeing some stop and go traffic from 218 to 159. The Bissell Bridge seems to be fine. 84 westbound slows up from Capitol Avenue to just about Park Road. Eastbound side's going to be slow from after Park Road to the end of the Bulkley Bridge. Route 2, so far, no major problems. Another traffic check is coming up in just a few on the Talk of Connecticut. Back to you, Mary. <laughs> just laugh. Oh, I love it. I love our conversations during traffic. <laughs> They're funny. That's too funny. Oh, too funny. And Baldwin, thanks again for coming in. Now, I... Let me see. I have not... Um, ever bought a cookbook of Paula Deen's. Mm -hmm. I've liked Paula Deen. I liked watching her on her show. Um, but I don't think I'm going to watch her anymore. Really? You're going to be mm -hmm. one of those folks? I am. I am. Well, okay. And it's, and it's not because I have never made a mistake. Oh, my goodness. And it's not because I now put her in, in a category of whatever. Um, but, you know, there are just a lot of other options out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not totally convinced of her sincerity. All I right. wasn't totally convinced of her sincerity on her online apologies last week, which I watched. And I wasn't totally convinced of her sincerity on the Today Show today. Well, you know, and that's your choice. And that's everybody's choice. And I've got certain people that I think are offensive every day that they do their job that I refuse to watch and I refuse to listen to. I, that's just a choice that we have. Um, you know, and so, someone said to me, well, you know, Martha Stewart didn't offend anyone and Paula Dean did. Um, I've talked to people in the television business who work closely with Martha Stewart. Now, there's somebody who is 
almost abusive and offensive on a regular basis with her employees. And I've heard it from the directly from the employees. And I'm sure if there are people that talk to you about me, they'd say, I talk to people who say, oh, I was an intern with you at Channel 30. Oh, you were crazy. You were mean. You yelled at me. You know, that's my personality. That's who I am. You know, you're a nicer person. I found it today. Can I share with people what you told me today? Oh, I've, yeah, you said. Mary Jones has never, ever, ever in her life said a swear word. I've said that many times. On I show. can't believe it. You know, though, I bet if you hung out with me for one day, I could get you to say something. I know I could. I know I could. You I have will to. say many, many people, I'm not going to say better than you, because I'm talking to Ann Baldwin here, but many people have tried. Many people have, have tried. they really? Yeah, and it's ridiculous. It isn't anything, Ann, I just want you to know, it isn't anything that I'm proud of. I mean, I don't say that with any, any um, you know, badge of whatever. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. I've tried so many times, and I can get a word like halfway up my throat, and then it just will not come out of my mouth. Will not come out of my mouth. <laughs> that is too funny. We well, have, good for you. We have Father Ed Nadonley on the line. Hello, oh, Father, Father Ed. Father Ed, hello. Oh, thank you for letting me on. Um, one thing I find that... Unless we forgive, we don't become free. And to the degree that we forgive, to that degree, uh, we become free. I find a lot of people uh, want revenge and so forth, but they become prisoners of their lack of forgiveness. And no matter what we do, I know there was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Paula Dean, she suffered tremendously with the publicity that she's got, and uh, maybe her future is going to be threatened by it. And we don't know if she was sincere or not sincere. Only God can judge that. But unless we do forgive, and that's our problem out in the uh, Middle East there, there's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and there's no forgiveness, so there'll never, never be peace. But I think the bottom line is, uh, when we look at any situation, uh, you compare uh, the football player Hernandez, what he did, uh, it's a matter of justice, uh, and, but, and he's uh, accountable. But uh, I think when somebody does something wrong, uh, they should be forgiven if uh, it justifies it, but they should still be accountable. And she's accountable. Father Ed, we're out of we're out of time. Unfortunately, I'm so glad you called and thank you for your your sage words as always, Father Edmund Nadonley from from Berlin. We're going to check in with the Wall Street Journal report. We will be right back. We're here with Ann Baldwin on the Talk of Connecticut right now. The Wall Street Journal report. Hey, with Ann Baldwin, and the nice thing is you share the studio with a girlfriend you can talk about pretty much whatever you want yes we can i like that i Ian. do too thank it's you fun. so much and we have chuck from Naugatuck on the line hello chuck hi girls you uh, sound interesting uh, i met i've never met ann baldwin but i've talked or heard you on the radio plenty of times with uh mary's show but you would just reference about martha stewart i remember a time when martha stewart said she, didn't she say once that she had to move out of Westport because there's a lesser um, uh, type of people moving in? It was getting overcrowded. Didn't she move to Westchester, New York or something like that? She did. She was having actually, I think, some sort of a dispute with her neighbors. Right. And the neighborhood so, pretty much ran her out of town. Yeah. Mm hmm Miss Baldwin, uh, you have a strong personality. You come across very strongly. Are you a Scorpio? What are you? <laughs> I'm actually Cancer and Chuck, yes. People, people are scared of her, Chuck. Yeah, I have a very strong personality. That's probably... Is it July 11th? Uh, 17th. And I'm going to be filling in for Mary that day on my birthday, so it'll be That's fun. That's right. Um, but, yeah, I'd say that a strong personality is probably an understatement. <laughs> Again, I know many people who are afraid of her. <laughs> well, you know, and I'm really harmless. I really am. But maybe that's why I'm good at what I do, because I like to help people figure it out. Uh, that can't... Scorpio, you know, or um, prevalent uh, witches and warlocks. Yeah, I, I, well, I've been called a witch before, that's for sure. Or something that rhymes with witch. Hey, oh, hey, Chuck, I don't think you'll they, get married, I swear, because she's been saying that, even with Brad, she's been saying that to all of us. And Mary is a special person, but Mary, yes. I'm a little surprised, like, Father Nodon, he was just not about forgiving. I know. Well, you know, it's funny, See, I, I would I have mentioned... Say, I don't think you I should, you should let, give this woman a chance. I don't even know who this woman is. I, I, it's more mm -hmm. I'm talking about you guys today than the woman, whatever she did. I don't even know who she is. Paula Dean. Well, it's interesting. I would have made this comment, um, but but we had to break for the Wall Street Journal report when Father Nadonley made that. I did not say that I'm not forgiving her. I just said that I probably just won't watch her on television because... Well, you didn't help her ratings any. It's like if somebody said about Mary Jones, you know, if you slipped on something or a group of people, but I wonder, this this woman, uh, Dean, what, what is she, what, what what kind of group of people does she 
as, who's attracted to her? Is it males and females? A certain group of I, what does she do? She's she's, she's a, a cook celebrity. Or she? She's a chef on the Food Network. Hey, thank you. Want to squeeze in one more call, Chuck? Thank you so much. Our good friend Lou Brown is on the line. Hello, Lou. Pleasant Wednesday afternoon, Mary. Hello, downtown Lou Brown. Any B, any B. Hey, listen. <laughs> I never thought I would disagree with Mary Jones, but I I, I disagree. In terms of. In terms of her, uh, Paula Deen's sincerity, I, I watched the entire interview, and I, I thought that Paula Deen was uh, this morning. very sincere. I, I she, this morning, I watched it with Matt Lauer this morning, and uh -huh. I thought she was very sincere. Mm -hmm. I thought I did not, she made a mistake, no question about it. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to be politically correct. But let me say this to you. I related to when she said so many things about, about young kids who you, when she hears the N-word being used, it makes her skin crawl. I think that's an, an exact quote. Mm -hmm. And 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 I I think I feel it, that she was sincere. Well, mm -hmm. Lou, and can we point out the fact to, for those maybe two people out there listening who don't know who you are? Um, Lou and I had the opportunity to work together at Channel 30 years ago. And Lou, the best beat reporter, cop reporter out there on the street, always was, always will be, and also an African-American male. So it's interesting, Lou, to get your perspective on, and as someone who, you know, comes from television news, on her sincerity. You felt it. I, I felt, I felt her, her sincerity came through loud and clear. Um, I, I think there are a lot of things at play here, but let, let me say this to you. When she mentioned about hearing young kids say it, I am now um, a, 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 a ranger down at the uh, Riverfront Recapture. And okay. last, just last week, I heard, I saw and heard three or four uh, mixed trial young folk, African American young ladies, they were using the N word. Mm -hmm. And this last I don't think they understand the malevolence of the word. Mm -hmm. they, and they were calling each other that? They were calling each other that, and they were in a mixed crowd. And they were just inward, this in mm. um, my skin crawled. Yep. Mm. But, but mm. let me close by saying that the, uh, one of the fact that it's public and it's debate about the inward again, I think positive things can happen. Yes. I, I think there's no question if you watch the news clips about the people going to her restaurant down here in Georgia, many of them are people of color mm -hmm. who are mm -hmm. sensitive to the use of the inward. But uh, I, I think that uh, initially. And that's why Anne is, has her job, because wh whoever she hired initially did her an injustice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did her an injustice. But, but uh, just lastly, if you ever want to hear a strong intellectual conversation about the use of the N-word, you should listen to Dr. Cornell West and Tavis Smalley. Oh, yes. Because uh, Cornell West has a position that's against the use of the word, whereas... Uh, 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 Tavis Smiley, Tavis Smiley is moderating, excuse me, and um, geez, I let, just lost his name, who he had a debate with. Tavis Smiley was a mediator, and the other... Lou, we're uh, out of time, unfortunately. But, hey, thank you for calling in, as so always. so good to hear, Lou. Just love hearing your voice. Thank okay. you, Lou. Be well, be well. Thank you, you too. You too, wrapping up with Ann Baldwin, talking about the Paula Dean controversy, and it's going to be very interesting it to is. just follow this, see how it To be continued to unfold absolutely i suspect that paula dean's going to be just fine i do too i yeah. mean that's just kind of my bottom line on that right well we'll check agree? back in a few months and see how it goes we will do that in the meantime you just have a blast beginning to prepare that wedding because like you're engaged and everything now oh. involved with a stunning <laughs> ring on her finger thank i'm you. telling you <laughs> thank you bill <laughs> thank you bill. and thank you for coming that was fun today. thanks Tony. So appreciate